one of the more difficult ones that we're faced with. Look at the placental cotton leavings. You can wash them with saline and then look for kind of these white fluffy impressions and that's kind of your, your tox screening. Um, if you can get, if you have a, a concern and you think that you're dealing with tox, if you can get to that next land that's born before he's um, nurses and you can get you a little bitty needle and if you're good enough to hit that vein, pull a blood test and then they can test that, that blood and see if there's tox tap titers there. Um, one of the things back on Toxo, um, and again, it's an extra label use, but there's some ideas that, you know, monensin, feeding monensin early on will help you in terms of controlling some, some Toxo issues. Um, Listeria, it's a bacteria that's going to live in the soil of the intestinal tract, going to also get into some silage. If you've got spoiled silage, that the pH is uh, not very acidic, um, there's potential contamination there. You're going to see those females, that, those ewes that are sick. It can be affected. You can inhale it. You can ingest it. When you start looking, if you see it early enough, Again, treat with high doses of antibiotics. It wouldn't even give me a, a dose on this one, Ron. <laughs> so uh, it just said high doses of Whatever antibiotics. Takes, then, right? <laughs> <laughs> the cure them or kill them method, I think. Um, but bacteria is also secreted in the milk. So if you've got a ewe that loses lambs, don't turn right back around and graft lambs onto that, that particular ewe. Um, You're also, as you get in, well, yeah. So as we get into lepto, you're going to see a sick, sick you, but you're also going to see more, the, the indications there are more jaundice. If you see the kind of a yellowing of their gums or yellowing of their, of their eye membrane, um, then you're going to, Leptospira or lepto is the only one that's gonna gonna get you here. I mean, if, if you follow the flow chart, that's the if you get to jaundice, that's the one and only that you you land on. Um, lepto, it's not very common, is it for us? No, I mean, I the ones that she's the one that she talks about the most are your Campylobacter, so um, uh, your Listerius, and then your uh, uh, Chlamydia, and um, Talks. So, listeria is a big cause. Um, yes, it, it's one of those uh, vibrio, not listeria. Yeah. Vibrio. I'm sorry, vibrio. Your Campylobacters are your vibrio. Um, so, bacteria in this case with lepto, it's going to be shed in the urine, semen, uh, any vaginal secretions or placental fetal tissues, um, and then it's. Seems like it's almost like soil. If you've got a scratch on your skin or something like that, it can get in through those membranes. Um, but again, early treatment with antibiotics. These that are just have one slide, you know, they're one of those that you don't have as much problem with. But you can actually vaccinate for this. Again, vaccinate only if you've had problems. Annual boosters. This is the one that you'll want to um, boost a little more often, but. Annual boosters for animals that are three months older or older. Typically, they say that anything less than three months, if they're on their mother, they're still getting antibodies that are preventing them from getting that. So um, they say wait till after they've been weaned, essentially. And then that, uh, if you're really wanting a pretty good response, that you need to do it every six months. Um, Q fever, this is the one that's most, I guess, um, the biggest concern to humans. Um, carried by cattle, sheep, goats. But as we start looking into, you'll see these in late gestation abortions or stillbirths. But once they, you inhale this, um, you can shed it in the placenta or birth fluids, colostrum, pass it actually through the milk directly to that lamb uh, if they make it. Um, but in humans, if we're going in and cleaning a barn, and we've had Q fever in that barn, 
and we stir something up in there and how many of us are actually wearing masks when we're cleaning the barns out um, you know we can inhale that and get have that problem ourselves um, drinking contaminated milk we've seen some problems with both not only Q fever but salmonellosis and all the and drinking contaminated um, goats or, or sheep's milk that's off of dairies so we've got to be concerned about it there uh, again tetracycline is is our method of choice for treatment but any aborted, aborted fetuses membranes we need to burn those and any animals would be quarantined and I'd say that goes for anything you know anytime we have a question that we don't know the answer to um, collect those those uh, fetal tissues and dispose of them as, as best you can and uh, and quarantine those animals and, and track them a little bit. Uh, don't just kick them out to you know the open pasture and say, well, we'll get them come sell time because they may be shedding on your pasture. Um, and they, one of the things you can do is you're bringing in new animals. If you want to, you can blood sample the, those animals and they'll actually test it for Q fever. But at some point in time, what is this, you know, when is it cost effective to do this? We'll test it for QV. Well, if we're going to have a lab, I mean, but I, I'm not sure if, if you ask me today, where do I send a bunch of samples off? I'm going to say, I don't know, let me make a couple of phone calls before you send anything. <coughs> and then we won't send them to five different labs. We'll just send them to the one that we need to. <laughs> And then blue tongue, um, Dr. Lapland said that I think she's only seen in the 11, what did she say she's been, 11 or 12 years that she's been at K-State, she's only seen two confirmed blue tongue cases in Kansas. Sheep? In sheep? In sheep. She's seen them in deer? Um, I don't know. Um, we had some blue tongue in deer this year in eastern Canada. And it is, you know, like anything, it just depends on the moisture. And, um, you know, if we can pin sheep up late in the evenings and let them out a little bit later in the mornings after those insects have had time to kind of lie, die down for the day, then uh, we'll be a whole lot better off. But, uh, again, it's probably going to be, she said, more of a problem uh, in fall lammers. You're going to see clinically ill sheep. Uh, you'll see the typical signs, swollen face, lips, muzzles. You'll start to see lesions. Um, and one of the things, pretty much all you can do, there is no treatment, but all you can do with those animals is feed them as soft a feed as you can feed them to help them keep encouraged to eat. Otherwise, they're, they're going to go off feed you, but they're going to lose them anyway. Um, but she said, don't, you know, don't, that doesn't mean necessarily turn around and sell everything. It's just, it's a virus. You've got to let it run its course. And then once you let it run its course, and then you're in, in shape to, to go again. So, um, and I, you know, again, this is something that I've just, I am by no means an, an, an expert on these, these abortions, but I think it's something that, um, from a standpoint of producers, you know, how do we apply it to our production scenarios? Um, the take home is, if we're not having problems, I wouldn't worry about it. If you know exactly of, of what abortion issues that you're, you're fighting, uh, then we can potentially vaccinate for that. If you don't know, but you've been having some problems with abortions outside of that, you know, 5% range or <clears throat> dealing with these problems, then I would look at, you know, making sure that I've got some way of introducing touch cycling to those used prior to lambing and start to try to prevent that, head that off. Um, my situation this year is I raised new lambs, I bought some new lambs and I raised some new lambs, but I raised them in a separate corral away from the rest of the youth, mm -hmm. and I kept them in that dry lot, and, and bred them there, and in the middle of December I put them on alfalfa pasture, which was like two weeks before the beginning of lambing, I put them on alfalfa pasture with the rest of the youth, and that's the first exposure they had since they were babies. To the rest of the bunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of something that Ronnie was saying there. 
too, is that 